computer. Hi, so wonderful to finally have an opportunity mm -hmm. to speak with you. Thank you so much for making the time. And um, you're real, like for over 30 years, you've been in this field. You've, you, you were helping to organize um, parts of the Rio um, summit in 92. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it just yeah. sets how, how long you've been in this this field. And and then you've been uh, we we're just just saying that you've been really leading with practice. Um, so I would just love to like normally I ask people to to start with what was it in you in your your own personal story that that when you kind of found out what's written on the back of your heart as your essence, your mission that that put you on this path? Like how how did how did the the story start? for Thais to want to be in service to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, as I said, off records, it's an honor. You know, I am a, a, an admirer, but also uh, an implementer of so many things that you conceptualize. So it's so, uh, it's, it's not only inspiring, but it's also a validation, you know, to have somebody uh, like you that have been like uh, doing it conceptually but also in practice for so many years to find words what we are doing no? because we, we are pioneering like a form of how and a strategy of how this all can be into practice no? but uh, the way it started with, was with the feminist movement uh, in, 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 in Italy. No, I come from uh, the dictatorship in Brazil. I am uh, like, a, I was uh, an adolescent, you know? So when we had uh, uh, this period of almost uh, 64 to, to the eighties, like uh, 20 years, more than 20 years of di dictatorship in Brazil, in which uh, all the, the, the vision for the country was technocracy and, uh, and, uh, and let's say, and, uh, and, uh, and kind of is, is, is data uh, creating like a statalized, you know, like making everything more state, you know, like Brazil being a state, uh, they own the state owning all the industries like in the state industrialization and uh, and uh, and I went as many people of my generation we all look for opportunities in in this new setting you no know? and I did a business school that was quite famous in Brazil like Fundação Getúlio Vargas and there I could I felt so depressed you know like uh, I could hardly Sometimes it was even hard for me to 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 to, to cope because uh, I mean it was all this inflation of us as young people that would uh, occupy all these important positions in the future of Brazil in in private and state companies. No, and when I finished the school, I decided uh, I felt relieved and I decided to to go to Italy. I had uh, in the in between I have had. Uh, just a period in which I, I went in, I went, uh, I I spent some months there for like four months there. And, uh, and uh, Italy and the feminist movement helped me to kind of, uh, that could, where it was that, that uh, the community that helped me to really uh, get in touch with this, that inner voice that was the back of my heart, as, as you said. And then, after and then there I became a journalist and uh, and a part of this was the time and the very uh, alive time in Italy, you know, of the of the the the, the communist part. Of, but it was this 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 open communism uh, with the, the the democratic Christian party that was always on 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 the on the on power. But uh, but this has helped me to see like. Uh, how civil society and active civil society could really shape uh, public policies and um, and uh, in many aspects of society, you know. And I was a journalist. And uh, when I came back to Brazil in 80, 86, I was a totally different person and ready 
to somehow engage uh, into something which was also the end of the dictatorship in the new republic. So I immediately uh, came into Brazil and create a radio program for women and, uh, and joined the, 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 the movement in, in Rio, which is my city, Rio de Janeiro, of, uh, of the creation of the Green Party. And, um, and all that made me uh, to be active also in Latin America. We were creating a women's teacher service. I was working for IPS, which was, an, uh, uh, you probably know IPS, the Interpress Service, which was a, a news agency to voice uh, the movements and, and, uh, and the new, new actors of, uh, of uh, development of this change. So I was... I was traveling throughout Latin America, organizing women journalists to, to create this service, which was called Women's Future Service. So my life had a, a turn. And, uh, and uh, for me, it was like uh, this sense of freedom that probably come from my family, which is, which is from Spain, no? Spanish anarchists. My, my grandfather created the first vegetarian restaurant in Brazil. So I could not, uh, I could not uh, really uh, be co confined to an, uh, to a, uh, a future or a strategy for my life, which was so tight and so uh, dry, you say, because this was what I I felt. So it was then just a process of uh, of identifying where the flow of the, the context, no, the perception, no, the 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 opening, the perception of all everything was going. No, it was in ninety in eighty seven we had the the commission on sustainable development and then the the, the suggestion that this big conference, this big UN conference, uh, 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 would be the way of. Uh, combining the different sectors, no? because the commission went uh, to find what people thought about environment and they and they and they realized that um, no the, the Brantland Commission, it was it was all that people really cared was about uh, their their livelihoods and the quality of life or in the communities and not uh, and that was so much what I also was was uh, could find in the women's movement, no, and the feminist movement that was all about communities and the uh, and the kitchen tables and all that. So there was a lot of alignment about where I was coming from and where I found my source of life. Let's say my my personal source of life and that possibility to create a movement that would. Uh, 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 Expand that, you know, and uh, and um, and because of that, hang on, you are you are mute. Sorry, um, were you already involved in the the Brundtland Commission work, or when did you get involved with the UN process? No, I, I'm I'm telling the, the the this now. I was invited because I was uh, like an activist, and I was invited to to a conference in Bangladesh. By the by the the German the the the, the foundation the, of the Green Party in Germany that uh, had uh, at the beginning you know, 89 the first the Green Party had the first time more than five percent of the at the parliament so they have money from the German government to do projects and uh, and uh, and uh, and the the women they had a a, a, a Specific foundation, no. The, so they, they they kind of create three foundations. One of them, where the the was the women's foundation that doesn't exist anymore. But that foundation uh, did the first eco-feminist uh, like a, a meeting in Bangladesh, and I was invited because I was a journalist and I was in the in the somehow part of uh, of that uh, process of uh, the women's part of the Green Party in in Rio. And, uh, and in that uh, in that uh, in that uh, in that uh, meeting, I, I met uh, like Vandana Shiva and many others that were like the starters of that. And uh, parallelly, in nineteen ninety, uh, in nineteen ninety, the the Bella Abzu, which was I don't know if you know of her, but Bella was a Congresswoman of the United States, very. Very involved in the civil rights movement, and uh, 
So she decided because uh, she thought uh, the 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 UN and the and the Earth Summit and this possible this conference that was in the process of being convened would could be a very important space and platform for women to share their views outside of the issues that were only women's issues. So I was invited to be part of this uh, steering committee with Vangali Matai, Vandana Shiv, and many other, like uh, very already to eminent uh, friends of Bella and people that have been in different countries. So we create this organization that was called We Do Women Environment and Development Organization. And this was the platform we do was kind of the platform to convene women from all over the world in their summit. So for two years, we did conferences, uh, consultations, and uh, when we arrived in Rio, we had the biggest tent at the, at the World NGO Forum. That was the biggest ever. No, I don't know if you were there, but uh, the Planeta Femia. And uh, I organized that with my women women colleagues in, in Brazil. And um, for 14 days, we had like a 1,500 participants, women from all over the world. Uh, each year, we create this Women's Action Agenda 21. Each, uh, each, uh, each, uh, each day, we had a topic of Agenda 21, the Women's Agenda 21, organized by a global network. So... It was an incredible, like uh, an incredible, not only event, but gathering, you know, and in which uh, we had like from uh, celebrities like Jane Fonda and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and other, other heads of states uh, like, uh, like uh, Maria, Maria, Maria Lourdes Pinta Silgo and uh, women from, uh, the communities, remote communities of Kazakhstan, you know, they were all there, nuns, you know, and that uh, kind of opened a new, I would say, cycle and era for women's participation in global global issues. And that started with this process in Rio, you know. So this was, uh, and because of that, we then participate in, in all that decade of the 90s, no, which was a decade of the of the UN Global Conference on Human Rights, on Habitat, on 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 uh, on diversity, and uh, we participated in all of them. With we do, and uh, I created through the Green Party in Germany that funded us for twelve years. I created two NGOs, of course, not alone with others, but one was about this connection with uh, women and, and sustainability, you know, and the quality of life in which we did uh, lots of small projects. It was like a strengthening a movement uh, throughout Brazil and also connecting to local government, especially local local movements. You know? And then a network of women's radio programs all over Brazil. And we, we had like, a, at a certain point, we had like 400 uh, women's programs uh, all over Brazil that really uh, galvanized communities and always the, the thread was how we could improve uh, qualities of life through integrating the environment of the social. So it was 20 years of uh, a very active also uh, implementation with communities all over Brazil through these two organizations. No? So we also had the opportunity, I personally had the opportunity to, 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 to do the consultations of the Brazilian Agenda 21, uh, which was an incredible platform. No? It is still for me, is a document that, uh, that nobody mentions anymore, but it was very, uh, inclusive and integral, has 40 chapters, everything that we continue saying about ESG and, uh, and ways of measuring wealth, uh, all these things are there. No, I mean, I worked a lot with Hazel and uh, we did uh, lots, a lot of work in Brazil, you know, about uh, new ways of measuring wealth uh, beyond GDP, all these things that Hazel mm -hmm. has dedicated her life. Huh? Hazel Henderson, when you, you mentioned, you know Hazel Henderson. No? Yeah, 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 wonderful. Uh -huh. she, <laughs> yeah. she was a real inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was. Uh, I would say, 
it was a build a, a road of building steps around uh, more or less the same teams and uh, the data went from uh, i would say 90 1990 when the, when i started to be involved until let's say 2004 mm -hmm. when i uh, started to feel that uh, that uh, instead of uh, trying so much uh, to work with governments and uh, and uh, i would like uh, to to in help uh, because i saw this with uh, agenda 21 no we built like 50 agenda 21s local agenda 21s which is which are a perfect way in which uh, in which all the the different uh, stakeholders multi level can can collaborate but we saw that by the time it was in the because Agenda 21 was mainly created this forum, the forum was created by a local legislation, no, and that legislation would <clears throat> would uh, would uh, I mean that forum was somehow uh, uh, stayed at a at a at a at a at a, a local secretary or or something like this, and then with the 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 mechanism of, uh, of uh, electoral mechanism and uh, of the local power, many of these, these, I mean, all most of them have been dismantled, you no, know, without funding, without attention, because there was this change in in the in the local leadership, public leadership. So that's when I decided that I would like to to dedicate myself to 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 a to a to a territory, to a location a place uh, and uh, for many years because most of these changes they require I mean more than a generation no and uh, and uh, this lack of continuity was not only frustrated but uh, for me but uh, it also leaves uh, a, a, a perception that uh, a negative perception no? that many people today have about these processes which I think uh, not much more uh, uh, consequence of the mechanism and who was on the leadership than anything else you know so you yes uh, me, when i started hmm? sorry the, the, you just made me realize something that is really fascinating um that in many ways the un did try to be regenerative in the sense of place sourced and local culture sourced when they established the agenda 21 and had, yeah, had they definitely. then had they then actually deeply listened to what each local agenda twenty one was developing and needing, and become subsidiary to the support of these agenda twenty one initiatives mm -hmm. in place, they could have continued on okay. a trajectory that would would have put them so much ahead into what they now need to redo, but instead because what happened is that. The politics and the big power plays in the central administration was more drawn towards the globalization agenda. Um, they didn't really yeah. listen to what wisdom would have come out of these local place sourced ways of working and implementing the the uh, sustainable development. So that that it's fascinating. I had I'd not really thought of Agenda Twenty One in that context, and so that that's really amazing. And. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it was so powerful. It was, I and there was so much. Uh, I would say uh, interest, you know, in the in the in the in on on the forums on the. That's when we had uh, this this also these participatory budgets. You know, there were so many mechanisms that were. Um, creative, established, and they all have disappeared, you know, and this, when you see that, this is so, uh, is so disappointing, because it's exactly as you said, there were, were no support beyond uh, the politics, they left all to the, to the, to the member states, and of course, the member states also, I mean, depending on who was there, they they also they always attribute. It was so funny, and I tell you, this this maybe uh, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say because I I admire her so much and uh, have been like uh, along her 
on side for, for, for a long time. But when Marina Silva, no, in 2003, when Lula entered Lula enter into power, no, and it was Fernando Henrique Cardoso, which was a very decent uh, administration, no, with uh, all the attempts they had to modernize the state, you know, and Agenda 21 had a, a, an incredible space at Fernando Henrique Cardoso uh, uh, government, you know, I mean, there was at national level, at the local level, because it was it was very aligned also with the idea that um, of uh, of modernizing the the, the 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 public sector, no, and have more participation, but also active participation in terms of implementing things that would be efficient and uh, and would make sense, no. So when Lula came and uh, and and uh, got Marina the first term as minister, no, I mean we had. Uh, just finished because I was really involved in the in the agenda 21 like a, in in shaping the Brazilian the the the, the national uh, Brazilian agenda 21 no we kind of took two it took two years to us to do the consultations to kind of uh, and, and and we did it in a very I would say now looking strategic way that instead of consulting everybody we took the heads of uh, the heads of uh, of actions, no, like uh, the the leaders of actions, and we we consulted the, the 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 which were the recommendations through them, people that have been through process for a long time, and uh, and so the 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 national agenda is really, I would say, uh, uh, I precise and strategic because it was the the, the process of all. All of these, these, uh, these like uh, uh, actions of uh, of uh, of these leaders, no, the, the we call it heads of uh, of networks, no, and uh, and so after these two years, we had the agendas, we had these these meetings in Brasilia, a process that also costs a lot of money and energy and engagement, and then Marina Silva came, which was the moment of implementation, no. And uh, and uh, and uh, and she called me and uh, to Brasilia, and uh, and said everybody says that uh, that you would be the most appropriate. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, you have been highly recommended to be like a, to help us to see the next step for environment uh, and uh, coming from uh, from all these processes in Brazil and all that. And uh, I would like. Uh, that you help us to to organize uh, the consultations again uh, for a big conference on environment uh, uh, in Brazil. I said, but, but Marina, we just have done this, you know, for two years. You have been consulting. We have here the Agenda 21. It's just a matter of implementation. And then, and then, and then as I left that room, you know, I have never heard from anybody again. You know, I went to Brasilia, I live in Rio, I went to Brasilia. So, and then they did, uh, of course, they, it was their, their strategy. They did a new conference, did again all these consultations, of course, in a much more, I would say not messy, but not strategic way, no, just, uh, just, uh, and so not the same people went, people also get confused, you know, why we are here. <laughs> Ask it again for for the same things over and over again, which helps a lot. Uh, happens a lot, you know. And then, to one year later, they did a big conference in 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 in, uh, in Brasilia. And in that conference, the majority of uh, of uh, people that went, you know, were like people against transgenics in Brazil and agribusiness, which was big in the agenda of Lula, it was always been because it's the driver of the Brazilian economy. And Lula, the, the headlines or the newspaper of that conference was, you are not the people, like the the, 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 the protesters there, that are, are going to prevent me uh, to develop Brazil. You know, so this thing of not continuity, even from very progressive people, and, uh, and uh, as Marina Silva, has kind of uh, uh, yeah. uh, 
and it happens over and over. Disable the possibility of us to evolve, you know, and that uh, and that was when I said I'm not going to put more energy in this. You know, I'm going, I'm going to do in my own way, in a limited way, but it's something that I can see the consistent and of course it will be in the margins because uh, i don't have the the possibility of uh, of moving something like this and then hazel and i did uh, did a conference in 2003 you know to just uh, just uh, on in curitiba with a lot of uh, international all the international like network of hazel or beyond gdp and all that which was these new forms of measurement and they were like uh, like activities then, like uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, local activities in Paraná and all that, but uh, but it's always this thing uh, that uh, is still for me uh, a big uh, like uh, inquiry, you know, a big question of uh, how things that which have been so powerful and galvanized so much interest just uh, are totally dropped down, you know, and uh, and then. And then they stay in the in the in the they are for, forgotten, no? And uh, and I think uh, and in Brazil in in the in these thirty years that I have been a witness of a witness of this process for me is still a big question, you know. Like even people that are very progressive let it happen, you know. No, it's 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 fascinating mm -hmm. that, that um, also with the. SDG process, something similar happened again, where there was a lot of initial interest and support and people wanted to get engaged, but then so much went into national and local reporting and very little went into supporting people implementing and starting from place and helping people identify what's already going on in this region that actually aligns with these 17 goals. And let's say that the goal number eight is something to discuss separately because that's the, the spanner in the works. But um, the people have given up on the SDGs to some extent because um, it's been all about reporting rather than implementing. And um, again, more national level conversations that have sort of split this holistic approach of 17 goals into which ones are the three that are most important for our country. And then you always get economic growth in them and then you don't get like the, the, the progress in that one actually um, causes le like degeneration in the other um, areas. So, so I, I think that there's a big parallel here that I also like with working with May East and Guy Education and the Global Eco Village Network, tried to support the UN process, but eventually got disheartened by it and and decided that um, what we need is models at the regional scale and um, creating living examples of a different way of working than this ever more abstract. Yeah process that the UN is trapped in. Uh, so yeah, the UN and, uh, and, of, and of course, you know what you're saying with the ESGs and, and all that. It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, the question is that most of, uh, of, uh, of this process, as, as I see, is uh, are not uh, in the core, you know, at the end, uh, this is the question. They are not at the core of interest, you know. They are like, uh, is people trying to get into this from, a, from I mean, from a, a, a risk, uh, a risk, uh, a risk perspective, which is which is very, uh, which is very low, you know. I mean, people are willing to stay. I mean, I have a friend that say people are willing to change everything without changing anything, and it's exactly it. Nobody wants to change anything. You just want to include that. And most of these things, you have to change it. You no, know? there is no way in which we are going to get into there if you don't change, because they are, I mean, their essence is change, you know, from where we are. And that is so hard, you know, it's, uh, so it's like you were saying, it's, uh, it's these models that are not necessarily on the mainstream, but they are progressing 
we have uh, based also on the the very urgent needs of the planet of the people you know and what the and the and facing the consequence of what is already happening no this is really interesting particularly having this wonderful opportunity to speak to somebody who's been in this for for, for so many years um i feel that there is an inflection point right now where the movement first of all we had this confluence of different movements the the the, the different social justice movement, environmental movement, everything that they've, they've they've come together into understanding that we've left it far too long to respond and are kind of aware that the game is up. And with that, I think there is a change happening that we we like this notion of being a change maker, of us being the ones that will make the bigger transformation of working in these different arenas in order to transform a system that we could see was running against the wall. Um, I think we're now at a point where the system is running against the wall all around us and the change is going to make mm -hmm. like when, when people say to me, how can you still have hope for, for change <laughs> is it, or that you could actually affect anything? Um, I think what, what we're doing I, more and more am, am reminded of EF Schumacher's wonderful um, line where he said, we may not be able to raise the winds, but we can raise the sails. So when the winds come, we're ready. And I think that's the game we're in now, where the, the, the change is going to come and it's coming hard and fast, but we can create the local and regional structures and the global awareness for the need for a new form of region to region collaboration in a world that be, will be very different post economic collapse which is most likely where the next few decades decade will will take us because of the environmental collapse how 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 strongly do you see the the this sense of um that we need to wake up to the point that we can't actually avoid certain things anymore and start thinking more how will we respond to the, the changes that we're now already committed to well and i took this turn you know of committing to a to a region to a place and now it's uh it's uh it's big you know because it's like two hundred thousand hectares you know that we are uh we are it's within our awareness you know of uh of uh uh, with the, the, I don't know if you know a little bit, and I can tell you a little bit uh, how Sinal has evolved. But what I see is is that everywhere, you know, uh, there are these two trends. No, there is a trend of predation, which continues to be very, very in Brazil. It's incredible, you know, like uh, because we have this loose. Uh, uh, regulations and uh, and uh, and a lot of uh, inflections from uh, from different criminal groups into power and all that it's the predation is is very is 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 very uh, goes also is very accelerated but on the other side i see also people the populations very aware you know very i see a lot of attention everything we do has a lot of attention. It's, uh, it, this is even much more than Agenda 21 because I have been part of this local process for 30, starting 30 years ago. You no, know? and so people were more interested at that point in their, like in seeing their their wishes, their dreams. You know, there was a lot of the the word dream was was a lot used. Now is not anymore. It's like a being like, how can we? prevent the worst, you know, and create, uh, like, be more present uh, to what is, to what, uh, what we are seeing, you know, and what we can do is still do. And I see much more people, like, uh, uh, more, uh, more present, less, less resistance, you know, to, to, to what needs to happen. This week, I have invented, you no, know, because also, 
Sinal is an invention, and uh, the maintenance of sinal is another invention, no? because can, as could, you could imagine, you have no subsidies, and it's all money from here and there, and the foundations, and all this paradigm of how people fund things. It's so, so, so <clears throat> obsolete. No, I mean, so against uh, that integration, because people want this and that and that, and they require a lot of... Uh, all these foundations, these funding mechanisms require so much energy, not just for you to access the money and all that. So I decided that this this, this year, no, uh, considering that I am there at the UN decade to which I applied, and I am also the co-chair of the advisory board because I said at least is a platform that is not uh, uh, too tight in which I, that I can use into making these bridges. No? So, and the Brazilian government uh, is, is chairing the G20, you know? so I said, this is a good opportunity because G20 is about finance and it's about also Brazilian government has a shepherd track, uh, which is on bioeconomy. You know? So I decided to, to together with, uh, with GIZ and some people that, uh, that really care about what we do and our vision, you know, which is bio the development of a bioregion through a biohub and to create a, and uh, and uh, and uh, contributing to a bioeconomy which is also ecological, no, which is not biotechnology, biotechnological, and no? that this is an opportunity to give visibility and to galvanize, uh, like a uh, uh, support on this. No, I mean we doing that, and we decide to do these dialogues around the bioeconomy to for the regeneration of our planet based on models and regenerative models. Probably Dick could talk to you a little bit about that. But it's so interesting. We just had a, a dialogue this week that I had like 40 people. It was at Sinal. And the attention of the meeting, it was a three hour like gathering at Sinal around surrounded by nature. But the attention there were people that uh, of the regulatory system uh, of uh, the public ministry, which is in Brazil connected to the public ministry, there were people like uh, from a big uh, like a uh, foundation mechanism like Fumbio and uh, and uh, the 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 BNDES, which uh, which is our state uh, bank, you know, mm -hmm. and all of them. This is what we have been saying: so much attention, and that attention comes from something inside themselves that they say that the way we are working is not uh, leading to what, uh, that prevention that we all need to, 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 to be aware of because, I mean, the consequences are going to reach everybody, you know? So I see that there is a change and there are very few channels to canalize this change into a different action. You know? So with the dialogues, we are trying to, create a little bit of that around that idea because we have a theory of change, which are the biohubs for the working in bioregions and contributing to a bioeconomy, which will have to have mechanisms and funding, but uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that is regenerative. No? Before we go, because I would like to come back to the, the that whole bioeconomy um, process that that you're helping with, because there's a, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. On that, but I think it would be really nice for you, like, to tell me a bit more about um, Sino de Valle. You meant, mentioned two hundred thousand hectares in your awareness, but how does it, like, does this include mainly? agricultural and and wildlands or are there settlements included as well um and and how yeah. is it organized like what's the ownership of of those 200 thousand um hectares i i i will tell you a little bit uh, maybe i tell you in a sequence you know because this is how it all yeah. unfolded yeah. no yeah. i had no idea when i started i just said uh, this very um clear perception and, uh, and intention that I would like to serve something that was concrete and I could somehow control, you know, because so much of what I have done in the past, of course, uh, put people together and it broke my heart, you know. If there is one thing that really broke my heart is to see people's intention and an effort into something different be completely dismissed and erased because I think it kind of... Uh, is a is a is a 
is a flame no? of evolution of possibility that is kind of a, 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 a impeded no? and, uh, and, uh, and I've seen so much of that with these agenda 21s and uh, and uh, very special in everything uh, you know that evolution is about continuity you know there has to be a holding intention over time, no, that was what made uh, evolution, like, uh, especially in terms of cultures, no, regenerative cultures, it has, this intention has to be at the bottom, no, and so I wanted to, to in that place, uh, I mean, the the culture, all the place, and I would be behind it with, uh, with intention, authority, and uh, a lot of dedication, no, I mean, and, uh, and that was how it started, I mean, the place, uh, it's interesting because everybody asks me why here and uh, I don't know. I mean, I just had uh, in this process of change, I had a friend that uh, that had a place uh, in uh, in this valley, you no, know, which is uh, which is which is a valley in the in the Bachada Fluminense, which is one of the most uh, underserved, uh, like uh, this, this destroyed uh, areas of uh, of the whole area of Rio, you know, during the colonization, this was like, a, this was a region full of rivers, and these rivers come from, uh, I mean, it connects the, the, the Guanabara Bay, which was the center of the Portuguese empire, you no, know, during colonization at Rio, but, uh, but uh, this is at the bottom of the bay, at the very bottom of the bay, where there were all these rivers and ports and, and, uh, and farms, and these farms produced a lot of the of the of the commodities. No, we didn't call commodities especiarias they call, it, but it was the commodities of the time. Where the, the 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 ports where the slaves would go to the mining state was Minas Gerais, at the center of Brazil. So it was a very dynamic, economically dynamic area. But then with the with the after the the colony, this was totally dismantled. The history, the the the, the everything, you know, and uh, because it was it was also uh, an area. It had malaria. They they buried a lot of the rivers and uh, and so I have no idea to where to what to, to to where I was coming to. You know, I just felt that. Uh, that uh, there was a place of Sandra, which was beautiful. She built a really a sanctuary in the in this place, and uh, I felt I start from here. So I wanted a place also that was not far from a from a big urban center because I would like to work with people. Our first idea was to work and develop leadership from the inner and outer perspective, which was a field that I was willing to 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 call more. Of to me, you know, and uh, and uh, and from there also, as I am an entrepreneur, the opportunities start to 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 emerge to to buy my more 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 land to do a project out there that had all the complexities of sustainability, you no know, land use, uh, social problems, lack of infrastructure. So that's how Sinal has started in two thousand. I started. I went there in two thousand seven. And Sinal has started, uh, I mean, in between 2007 and 2011, we had a lot of uh, a, a leadership, uh, like uh, trainings. I was the head of Lead International. I don't know if you remember, created by the Rockefeller Foundation. I was a fellow. They, and then they hired me once. In that, uh, huh? I once, um, just... Before I wrote, or while I was writing my book, I, I did a little job for Lead International just bef before they changed completely, I think, um, shortly yeah. after. They asked me to do a um, course on systems thinking for them. So I designed an online course that they ran. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah they taught Julia, no? Julia Martin Lefebvre? It was, mm -hmm. it was still the leadership was of Julia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or Gillian? I Gillian think... or Julia? But just for you to see, you know, a, 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 a lead is a, is an example because I was on the first cohort in '93 that did the, the their training, you know, like with a lot of resources and somehow also very disconnected because we were 
like looking into examples from uh, Ireland and from this and that and that. But uh, Leiden itself has spent, you know, the Rockefeller Foundation, which was the, almost the only funder, has spent a hundred million dollars, you know, in this in creating this program. Hundred million dollars. Can you believe that? And then, and then, you know, I probably and uh, and this was what uh, Peter Goldmark has told me in one of the social forums in which we met uh, because I, I I happened. He said, "Thais, you were the only person that in this whole program that did something, you know, with another fellow. We implemented like a." an adaptation program that I also uh, held for, for, for 12 years together with, at the beginning, together with uh, Sinaldo Valle in the Sertão of Bahia, that also what was local and about uh, creating like uh, the, this ecosystem you know, of collaboration on things that already were there, you know, like cooperatives and all that. But uh, and with another guy that was part of, uh, of the lead international. So, it's uh, it's uh, it's really uh, it's really it's really about uh, what we were talking about this the, the beginning. You know how one of the pitfalls of the Rio conference was that so little went uh, on implementation. It was all about meetings, training, like uh, like travel and. Uh, and, uh, and and very little about uh, creating the conditions, enabling conditions for collaboration. Because I mean, hundred million dollars and lead was ended because of lack of funding. Because there was all these programs around the world, like uh, the the lead uh, hubs, mm -hmm. and the lead hubs were all dependent on the on the funding of the Rockefeller Foundation. And the funding finished. There was no way of continuing to mm -hmm. subsidize like uh, these units. But what the the impact of that, besides the network, that still people kind of are in touch, very few, but there were very few like on the ground, uh, innovative, uh, collaborative uh, 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 arrangements. You know, uh, we did one with this guy, Daniele, which was Italian, that was in the Sertão of Bahia. But uh, that was for 12 years. We have the history. They continue to be there. There were plans. We got, we articulated several possibilities also with funding from government and all that. But, uh, but I mean, that was because somehow I think there was this naivety that, the, the, that somehow the funding for the implementation would come from somewhere else, you know? And it doesn't. I think you have to do the complete... Uh, Package, you know, and that was the model, the example. This is what uh, is going to make a difference. But this is what uh, still, you know, is so hard. Uh, 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 there is this idea that you do a report, you kind of do a diagnostic, you do, uh, you, you, but then the implementation somebody else will do, like the government, and this never happened. And the whole energy that was put into that. Uh, on that, uh, on creating that that connection, no, with the people that are at the moment on there, is dispersed, you know. And I've seen that in everywhere, including in Lead. But Lead, when I when Lead has had no money, they invited me to be the head of the of Lead Brazil, like the the the, the president of the board. But there was no money, and I said, so there now that there is no board, no money, I'm going to do it how I imagine, and so. I start to bring them to Sinal. We brought two cohorts with uh, like funding, like funding from uh, from different sources that would fund for the. And I was very focused into the projects, you know, that people had a project to collaborate with. And uh, some people didn't have a project, and I said, why don't we do a project at the valley? The valley has all the problems of sustainability, in which uh, we can. Uh, um, uh, simulate um, uh, uh, implementation, and that's how somehow Sinal do Valle, the organization itself, uh, to do what we do, started. No, because we needed, we want, we started to work uh, with the idea of creating a school, a school for uh, uh, a sustainable school, and then we did the everything, and then the the government at the end for. For political reasons, didn't uh, didn't want to 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 buy the land to do the school, 
and I started to search for another place and found this place that was kind of a, a school, which is Sinaldo Valley now. And then, and then we didn't have. Uh, I mean, of course, they they didn't want to pay. All these things that always happen uh, to to do a goal, let's say, to be <laughs> to to kind of do something uh, that uh, that galvanizes everything, you know, and. Uh, and uh, and I said, well, but I'm not going to give up. And uh, and from the from the radio network, we had uh, like an endowment, and uh, and I could use the endowment to buy the land. So Sinal today has 200 hectares of uh, of land, mm -hmm. and then we started like a living laboratory. Like I started with uh, no resources, no money, no subsidies, but with young people. I said, uh, as I saw. Uh, into so many in all my journey, I saw that so many of people that uh, so many of so many of these people that do Gaia, that do all these programs, they would like uh, to have an opportunity to express it, you know, in action and in collaboration. I'd like to learn that, you know, to learn how to collaborate to do something different. And so Sinal became like a container of that, you know. So over the years, four thousand of these young people came, people that I had no idea. I mean, <laughs> ended up there, and some are, are there for have been there already for ten years, like Katie and uh, and Johanna. Many come and go and find their own path. So it has been a very interesting respect on that sense. And then, I mean, how how we we went from the two hundred, the two hundred actors took time to to be together, you no? Know, because of course, uh, it was piece by piece because all this land was also teared into pieces, you no? Know? I mean, like uh, this was a a, a farm, a, a coffee farm during the colony. That then, when the slaves left. They it was kind of abandoned, no, and so people from uh, from Minas Gerais especially start to come because there was a new industrialization in that region. No, that they did uh, they did a, a a a plant to to actually to to, to around the fifties, the forty, the forties and the fifties to to build a. a, a Weapons, no? It's interesting that, uh, and many people from Minas Gerais came to actually do that, and uh, and uh, and they uh, and so they, sorry, and I'm they, and they, and they, and they uh, just, the actual uh, site, the actual site you're working with, had a history of being a weapons factory at some point. No, or? no, not oh. not the site in which we work, but farther away, and then was 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 also a, a fiat a fiat the, the, the Italian company also uh, um, a big plant uh, so it had uh, during the war it was like a, a, a how do you say canyons can, canyons uh, the, 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 cannons, the yeah. big trucks you know ah, huh? uh, yeah, big trucks, you? Yeah, um, yeah big trucks yeah uh, these big trucks this was all but this was around the 40s and then theater the 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 the, the company uh, has 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 occupied that and for many years and so people from but we are on the other side it's a small valley and people uh, full of water you know it seems that you are it's it's a very even by geography it's very Protected, you know, it's interesting that this valley has that uh, that characteristic, you no, know, because it has somehow maintained a culture of a uh, of a um, of people that know each other, that never never uh, no. went too big and have never had the crime that it has around that and that region. So it has very specific characteristics also but even to get these pieces of land you know to, to give an identity to the land that we are working on it took uh, many years you no know, to buy to have people that would help to buy things that were critical to maintain that uh, that identity and in 2017 when this was somehow complete and we had the the, the young people like the school of Senal, let's put that way it's not a formal school, but it's a, a, a true life school. 
and then and then we were working on on the on the on food systems, no, on soil, uh, 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 like uh, food, and uh, improving the 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 land, you know, the soil and and the land. We start to think, you know, that how we could, uh, because Senal in itself is not isolated, but how was we could uh, improve uh, our our connection with the bioregion, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was when we started to see there was a refuge of a biodiversity just uh, very connected to us. We are within a uh, 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 protected areas, not so restricted, which was called in Brazil, APA. And uh, there was the, this refuge, how we could connect it to, to this, this, the, this, this bigger landscape, you no? Know? And uh, and create a vision for that. And since 2017, we we have been doing that. And then we found uh, the, the the players on the, the 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 players that have affinity and had a synergy with us along the way, like. Uh, Two other hubs that exist uh, in in that uh, in that region. One that is like a bright a, a reserve, a private reserve, and the other is also from a German is a, a, that has created like a, a an eco. His attempt was to create an eco villa. He comes from this movement. He never succeeded, but he has this place with this vision that create lots of sustainable technologies to showcase what was possible and this and that. And so we started to work more together and to envision that uh, that it could be like a connection between our three hubs mm -hmm. that are in, in different parts of, of that uh, bioregion, let's say, let's say that way, that is all in the in this buffer zone of the Guanabara Bay, between the Guanabara Bay, the Uber encroachment, and the big part of Serra do Mar, which is which is which are the high mountains that are, that are in which the the, the forest, the Mata Atlântica, is protected. No, so but this is a very, I would say, critical area for for for, for securing you no know, water for the whole. Is 14 million people that live uh, in Rio and uh, in all this area of Bahia de Guanabara. And um, this is like the drinking, the human water, security. The drinking water from the, huh? the drinking water of Rio comes from the watershed of Yoda. Yeah, comes from, yes, come from, comes from these watersheds. Yeah, comes from where we are, from this bioregion, okay. which is totally, there is a totally, I would say, disconnected between. The management of uh, of uh, uh, of Rio and uh, and uh, and what is there, you no, know, the, in terms of infrastructure support, uh, but uh, and then we we step into Fundação Boticário, which is which is which is this big group of cosmetics in Brazil, that uh, that the the own the the founder has this idea also of regions, no, of, uh, of supporting conservation for water uh, uh, conservation. It, uh, they have this, this focus this link with, in this regions link with of Brazil. They are from uh, Paraná. Huh? Are they linked with Natura or do they also own Natura? No, no, they are ah. different. They are like a competitor of Natura, you know. But uh, but in my view, with the much more because I know Natura, I know so the, the the founders of Natura. I think they have done incredible things in terms of creating these value chains of uh, to to enforce the social biodiversity. But uh, Boticario is really because I've been working with them for the last uh, uh, two years very intensely. And they really are very consistent, you know, and they have uh, this idea of the regions, like support regions into 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 innovation for conservation, for water, 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 water uh, protection, you know, uh, protection and enhancing the, the capability of water production, but with a very, I would say, ethical and uh, and um, and a and positive involvement, which I find, uh, because I also worked with Natura, more consistent. You know, maybe because they are not a they are not a public company. No, Natura, since it became a public company, you have this this like this very very 
intrinsic just, tension, no, of money. You know, it's just uh, and the, and Boticario, I think it's still the same owner. It has his vision and uh, and uh, and they are from Paraná. Somehow, people from Paraná are different. They still keep, you know, these these very old structures of fashion eyes. I don't know if you've ever heard with very with an honor of tradition, you know, and I think this is important because when you go into all this mainstream between you and me, it's a lot of bullshit, you know. <laughs> so of what you you and uh, and uh, and uh, and I see, I, I really see, and with them we kind of took off because they wanted uh, to kind, they didn't know how because they are not from this region, but. Uh, with them, we we strengthen, we we create this Caminho do Reconcavo da Guanabara, which I, which has been like a breakthrough. You know, the idea of do this trail, which we call the Caminho do Reconcavo. Reconcavo was a name that this this whole area had during the time of colony. You know, so you couldn't believe, uh, 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 Daniel, how, you know, just to re reconnect it to 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 this, this time in history and also to all that happened and all that trauma, you know, mm -hmm. that was part of, uh, of that history, what it has unleashed, you know, of, uh, of convergence, of, uh, of intention, of attention, of, uh, of uh, possibilities, you know, of uh, truth. Uh, that's what I have to say, a real, real truth. So it has helped us, you know, like uh, in our little thing as a biohub to have a credibility mm -hmm. to move uh, a process in this 200,000 hectares so with Fundação Boticário and many other seeds that are around and uh, in places and uh, and the local the local authorities not all of them but some of them you know so it's not a, that I say it's a, all all you know how it is it's all little little seeds of uh, little points of light but it has like a consistent uh, with uh, values and uh, with the true intention of doing something that uh, that is is beneficial no, for, so for the environment for people. So to what extent, because like what I'm, I'm always interested in, you know, that your, your organization is a member of the um, Regenerative Communities Network that the Capital Institute started a few years ago, um, which also has a number of bioregional initiatives in it. Um, I would actually say that they misnamed it. They should have called it a bioregional initiative network rather than a regenerative community or bioregional regeneration network rather than a um, regenerative communities network. But um, I think these stories all have different levels of percolation into all levels of society in the regions that they're operating. Sometimes they're really just a group of really amazing individuals, um, 20, 30 people that work in different organizations starting to think the vision of how would we rethink this region with a re-regionalized economy, more self-reliance, but a global connection through collaboration and, and putting at the center the need to regenerate community and, and and the environment um how how deeply in touch with the local government the local businesses the industries is this conversation already or is it still a parallel conversation in your region no no it's a it's a true conversation i mean because through through this Boticario foundation you know, in these two years because this was our my question you no know, more than anything you know how we enter we want to do bioregional work but how we enter in that and that was the answer was a trail you no know, the coming of the Concavo, because it's 110 kilometers it's into the it's uh it kind of uh, uh passes through five municipalities uh, like uh, uh, very, uh many protected areas, uh, 11 protected areas. So we kind of put uh, uh, connected a very a very diverse uh, community of, uh, of players, no? So, and we have been, we, we kind of, uh, is, uh, we divided the trail into nine areas and also into sectors. No, we are working on tourism. We are working in, on 
on agriculture, and we are working on on, on biodiversity, you no, know, on the on the ecosystems services, you no, know, and how we could uh, translate this also into 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 benefits, and also in value chains, you no, know, that we are working with. Uh, with we are just starting a connection between like a. Uh, uh, an Italian company, like a, a biopharmaceutical company. I don't know if you know about Aboca. Have yeah. you heard about they, Aboca? They, yeah. They, they and the and the landless movement. Huh? Aboca has a has their own publishing house in Italy. Um, it was Edizione yeah, Aboca. Yeah, I know. And they published my book in Italian. It's it has a different title in Italian. Ah. So yeah. And, oh, okay. Okay. So you know Massimo and the uh, and the uh, and the people, yeah. They he's like a visionary and uh, but so we we started because I think value chains for companies that really are meaningful are another another I would say frontier another 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 po big possibility, you know, for bioregional development because I mean you need to create you have you need to replace. Uh, and the, the the current economy because people need to make money and they need to be part of something. So we are starting with uh, this the, this process with Aboca and uh, and the land in the big uh, land of the landless movement. You know, which is about a thousand hectares, and we are starting very small because can you imagine? But also, it's uh, it's it's fascinating to see. You know, the like uh, like uh, how to 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 make these two worlds meet, you know, even though there is a lot of uh, benefit, mutual benefit that could but, be created. No, but this is this is what we see as the role of uh, of the biohub and the and the Camino do Reconcavo and all that. So we are working in these three in these three aspects. And uh, in each one of them, we are we are kind of uh, creating because, of course, the the change or the possibilities or the new ground couldn't come only from one, but we we are kind of doing this these new arrangements, you no, know, like uh, for agriculture and uh, and uh, and uh, and not uh, forgiven also uh, the 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 public policies that are there, the things that have to do. So, but by making the design you know, of, of these possibilities more, more, more clear, more tangible, more like uh, also effective, you no? Know? Because I think uh, this is the year also of creating not only results, but uh, the process that uh, that also the meaningful result has to be part of the plan in a short term, you no, know, because otherwise people give up, you know. So there is a component of timing which is very important. So this is what uh, Sinaldo Valley is, is has been doing and uh, in the in all levels, you know, like uh, we kind of uh, bring whatever we need to kind of create in these combinations. But it's like a weaving process, you no, know, very, very, very very subtle and uh, and uh, and very also um, in intensive in dedication. You know? but I don't see another way. You know, this is how I think uh, these things could evolve. I, ju I just hope to have. Uh, I mean, of course, this I have been leading a lot of this, but of course, I'm not doing alone. But I just hope that. Uh, that uh, that we are giving the time, no, for this to become uh, more like a, a sustaining, a self-sustaining culture, no. When when you said value chain earlier, did you in the work with Aboca? Did you mean supply chain? Um, like yeah, I, supply chain. So you, yeah. you produce. They are going to supply the the herbs to Aboca. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's happening more and more that global players are, are trying to support regional initiatives to secure um, supply chains um, in a in a kind of personal. Yeah, relation. and I think uh, this is a this, this is a big uh, this is a I see this is a, a great uh, opportunity for for regeneration. No, because of course uh, we have to have the brokers, no, of the process and uh, the stewards, no. But uh, that's where biohubs are, are important, no? Because I think uh, 
I think this is where we can play a role of, uh, of being like uh, following the process so that it doesn't become something else because it's very easy because of the misunderstanding. There are lots of, uh, well, this of is questions connected. Exactly. This is where I wanted to go next with regard to the biohubs because, like, first of all, do I understand mm -hmm. biohubs correctly? Um, because I, I've been, as, as you know, also working on this how do we re-regionalize economies? How do we shift from, like, if we want to have any chance to stop climate change, we need to understand that our entire material culture is fundamentally dependent on the petrochemical industry, um, which means uh -huh. that if, if we stop taking the stuff out of the ground and we stop burning it, then we won't have the gazillions of tons of byproducts which are currently fueling the plastic, and all the other the clothing industry, so everything uh, um, has petrochemicals in it, which means we need to come back to a biomaterials-based economy at a time where climate change and water availability is negatively affecting our capacity to grow food. And so we need to be really careful to do this the right way. Otherwise, we're going to have a much bigger replay of what happened when people were when going into biofuels and everybody was growing corn for biodiesel and then people were starting to get hungry and and there wasn't enough food production in certain areas um so in a country like brazil where there's been such a strong application and lobby and money making around genetically manipulated organisms, transgenics, um, chemical fertilizers, all of that. Um, how do you drive a process like the bioeconomy that is so easily all these players could say, oh, we can clink into that. We can like, oh yeah, we do bioeconomy. And then before you know it, you have a have a sort of version of the bioeconomy that is all based on sensors, on ro robots harvesting, on um, uh, genetic manipulation and it isn't actually the kind of deeply regenerative agroforestry practice that, that one would like to see to produce both the biomaterials and the food regeneratively. Um, where are you positioned? Yeah, the question I mean, yeah, but this applies for everything, you know, like uh, like uh, the, the word the sustainability has been totally hijacked even the word now regeneration also has already been used. Uh, I mean, for yeah. for 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 something which is not regenerative. No, there is everything now is regenerative, regenerative travel, regenerative this, and the uh, and the bioeconomy is the same. But the question is to because we have to somehow create a common connections. No, and uh, what we are defining, and I can send you how we are. Uh, I can send you how, how we are, our our theory of change and the concept note that we are using, but we are calling it the ecological bioeconomy, you know, because it's uh, it's an economy that uh, it is connected to the land uh, and uh, and uh, at the scale of the bioregion. No, I think uh, I think what differentiates um, the only way in which I see a possibility for a differentiation is the scale, you know, because uh, I mean, if it, the scale and uh, I say every day, like somehow I pray, you know, like uh, so that the land and uh, and we are really serving because we are really serving the land, you know, informs us what, what is next, you know, because in this in this world of so much confusion of, 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 of words and concepts, it's uh, it's very uh, difficult, not for me or for uh, the people, but it's very confused. It's very easy to get into discussions that are uh, doubt, uh, in, that get very confused, you know, about the value of what we are doing, you know, because all that uh, that really informs us and uh, not only informs but gives you the gives us the strength to continue, is that we feel. That the value of what he's doing is is like a, 
is like progressing, no? Because otherwise, uh, we just uh, as everybody else say, uh, goes. Because this is what uh, I feel in people. The, a lot of uh, I I think this is one of the the biggest uh, I would say difficulties. No, that uh, we live in an era of a lot of uh, manipulation. No, and uh, and. Uh, who don't know? We don't know who manipulates who because I think manipulation has become a predominant trend, and and so everything can be very easily destroyed by doubt. You know, like that you start doubting that you can't do that because this belongs to this and this and that. So we call it ecological bioeconomy, but I think it's important because also we need uh, to do what we are doing. We need. Uh, Resource, we need funding, no, because we need a re as a regulatory systems. We need partnerships also in all the in all these levels. No? Have you have you um, heard of a man called Albert Bates? Does that ring a bell? No. Who, who? So, so when when your colleague Dirk was was here and visited me, um, he I already. Yeah him about Albert. I think Albert would I'd gladly put you in touch with him. He would be an interesting person to talk to. Albert was, um, I mean, he's a, he's a kind of, he used to be a litigation lawyer in New York um, many, many months uh -huh. ago, but then he left that in the 1970s to um, basically co-found the farm um, eco-village. Uh, he's got he's a, a right livelihood award winner with the farm for for the work that they did in disaster yeah. response and 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 so on. Um, he's been founding member of the Global Eco Village Network, um, a real community activist all, all his life. But he's also been at every of the COP climate conferences and has been following that whole process um, from the start. And written a number of books uh, on, for example, he's written one of the key books on biochar. Um, and uh -huh. um, yeah. he he has a project that he's working on, which he calls, uh, calls Cool Village or Cool Labs, which are basically a functional co technical conceptualization of an integrated regional bioeconomy with biodigesters and um, working to use any kind of organic waste streams in food or biomaterials production in the most efficient way um, through, through mimicking nature's cascading use of resources. Um, and I think he, uh, you'd, you'd find it really in, informative for this bioeconomy concept uh, if you're working on an ecological bioeconomy. And the other, other bit is the work that um, John Todd, my uh, second PhD supervisor, mm -hmm did on um, eco-industrial parks uh, in like, for example, the Burlington, Vermont. I can I can send you a couple of links there but, um, to, to also mm -hmm. kind of give precedence of people trying this out before. Um, yeah. Yeah, perfect. I know we need that. Yeah, which I think, you know, just going back to the, the to the Regenerative Communities Network, RCN. Yeah, I was very involved with that for about uh, a year. Mm -hmm. So to nine, 2019, 2019, 2000, 2019. My sense, you know, is that uh, there were too many consultants, you know, like uh, too many people that, uh, that want to know about that, that want to do work with the bioregions and the and the few that uh, that were that that were true were either in our North America and really like I would say uh, focusing on 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 certain technologies. No, not so much about uh, to integrate uh, this this very big diversity. No, very few were in the South. I mean, John Fullerton has always been a friend, and uh, I think he understands what we are doing. But I, I thought uh, at a certain point we stopped uh, like participating in the meetings because it was too much about uh, the consultants trying to 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 kind of have a certain methodology, you know, <laughs> like uh, in the, and I don't think it's about a methodology; it's about uh, okay. about See, what is, uh, is useful for the goal, you know, is 
ecocentric is not a egocentric so i this is really I thought it would be it's yeah because the the guy who was partially responsible for pulling the network together um Stuart Cohen who is now the um director yeah, I know of him. the Ackman the Fuller Institute Stuart came to to visit me here on Mallorca and really wanted me to also kind of formally launch the work on Mallorca as a bioregional initiative and then become a formal member of this network and and it I, I purposefully decided that it wasn't time yet to make a sound about like this is the Mallorca Bioregional Regeneration Initiative because it would have only come from me and a couple of other people. Um, I personally think it's necessary to build these regional networks and connections before making the big announcement. And yeah. um, I felt that what they were leading towards was exactly what you're now describing as your experience with it. It's like I didn't have time to be in Zoom calls to try to yet again create some sort of abstract process that then everybody could follow because I don't think that's how it works from the practice. I know that every place, every culture, every ecosystem is so unique that... Yeah, exactly. What, what the the even the sequence do this first this second this third in one place that sequence might work in another place you'd have to reverse the sequence to be successful because it's it's a different exactly. culture yeah and so exactly. so it, it that the whole and it's this, it's happening again with Ashoka coming into the common land work with the, the bioregional weaving labs they are also in danger of trying to yet again create an abstraction of a process that they can then or some form of label that they can sell so people can call themselves a bioregional weaving lab or something um they people still don't get that the really hard work that as you're saying commitment and just staying with it of building human relationships of carefully crafting in interventions that change the narrative the collective awareness of place the collective awareness of each other and what everybody has to contribute um it's a very different way of working than than trying to create an abstract process that you can then write uh, run a course on yeah. so other people can do it um, yeah which concepts that somehow are are like uh are very well um the narratives read and sound very 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 fancy no <laughs> but uh, but at the at the bottom is what you're saying you know is what is possible with a, a very clear intention of uh, of uh, i would say of in, of improving the situation of a uh, in a in a in a in a system systemic way you know in which everything is part of i think this is this is the the biggest challenge is, is how we include the whole thing in a new arrangement in a new perception in a new in a new uh, connection and this is you can only it can it, it can only uh, be po it's only possible if you really do it you know it's not a, it's not a concept that is applied to that you know and uh and again, as as you said, this is what I feel. People are willing to create these concepts, and then and that has no relevance because at the region, this is not what is relevant. It's uh, and in that sense, I think that Sinal, if I may, you know, I think it was because maybe of uh, of this whole process of with the women's movement because of this place that was was so 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 powerful, like nested in this valley. And uh, the place of uh, where I, where all started, which is very beautiful, this place of uh, that Sandra, my friend, uh, that brought me there, has created was she was looking for a place, and she really designed a, a place, designed with the place. No, it was not that she did alone. I mean, but it was what the place revealed to her. She always say that it was a place for healing, and it is through this this subtle like connection that people have a bit among themselves and with the place that uh, that uh, can from there uh, uh, help to create uh, this new confidence you know it's not through a concept I think that still I think it's uh it's people because the concept 
I think it uh, it stimulates more of the same, no more like uh, that. Yeah, this is so nice. I can be part of that, and maybe this will allow me to go beyond that and all that. And I don't think this is the way. Of course, this will always be because this is how our society works, you know, through brandings and logos and uh, and tag, tags. But uh, but uh, something else is needed if you are going to evolve in another direction. One one thing that before we end, um, it's got two things I, want, I still want to ask. Um, one is that uh, you mentioned earlier the dysfunctionality of working with the often really well-meaning and and wanting to support positive change people that sit in the straitjackets of conventional foundations and the whole process of the con conventional foundations in terms of reporting and each one of them wanting something slightly different when when you when you run a project that depends on core funding from three or four different foundations the danger is that you begin to lose so much of the creative energy in hand holding these foundations and their own requirements for um reporting and all of that I would love to hear with all the experience that you've had in 35 years of doing this work where, where I'm sure often you, you had to deal with foundations as well. Um, if you had a magic wand and could redesign the foundations landscape or how the current foundations operate, what are the key bits where you say that's what needs to change? Well, I'm going to do uh, a pragmatic answer because this is where I I, I think uh, that uh, as everything you no know, as, as it was my decision and uh, and I think you understand that at a certain point I decided you know that in order to 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 really serve the the, the objectives and the, and the and what was meaningful for me you no know, which is life which is the which is the the web of life. I need to commit uh, at, uh, to to something at the reach of my hand, which is which is which is a region. No? it was something that I I can even though even though I am connected to, I have global connections. But my action, my my place is 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 a locality. You know, everything we do is there. I think foundations and people that have money, that are willing to make a change, they would also to have. They they need to commit. Uh, in this in these new arrangements, you know, because there you also because they want to measure and then after two years they want to see the results because they are totally disconnected also to that reality. Most of the times, and I have to say because I have been like uh, 30 years you know, like in the, this NGO sector and uh, and uh, and kind of uh, raising money and all that. I think it's uh, many times the most important thing is not uh, because before we do, we kind of do a project because this is how it functions. But uh, it's, it's a, when you actually go into the reality, most of the times it's a blind date, you know, because you really don't know what we're going to find. And most of the thing, most of the times what we need are kind of uh, enable the projects have to that any change needs to, before before the idea of the change that we had, it needs to to the identification which are the conditions there. What needs to be cared, taken care of before you kind of even imagine that you could do this and that and that. And normally the money is not there for that, you know. So sometimes you have to do really real <clears throat> like big. Uh, like twists in their negotiation, hard negotiations to actually do what is needed to be done, you know? So I think uh, that if the foundations commit, and this is my theory of change right now, you know, it's like, a, I always say that, uh, that the difference, uh, that's why I really want to call, you know, a biohub and to conceptualize that. Maybe you can help us improve that. I know that you talked to Dirk that uh, it was not a biohub by a bio learning, but there is a function for the biohub, which I think is very important. If you say bio learning, it won't, uh, I think it misses that aspect, which is all these bridges, you no? Know? The biohub is like a, an enabler, you no, know, of, uh, of this, all these aspects that unless you are there, 
every day and you talk to people and you see, you observe, you are going to perceive, you know, and through this, this, like this, this, this vision, you will see what needs what, because in our very complex world, maybe the change immediately is not money, it's something else, you know, and only, only if you are there observing, you are going to really identify which are these these key enabling conditions. No, and uh, and uh, and uh, but I just want to do mm -hmm. to to share with you that I had this insight. You know, in in one of these dialogues with the Peife people of Brazil, it was the only one that we didn't do connected to the bioregion. There was this meeting, and you know, and so we we also with them decide to do a dialogue to call the people of Rio that was in this in this was working on on that question of the of the. Of the, I mean, people of the G20. This was, and uh, and they were talking about all these different, uh, like, uh, difficulties. No, imagine periphery is all over Brazil. There are all kinds of uh, abuses and uh, and uh, and very extreme conditions. But I think that NGOs, because the NGOs were were arise arise from the arose from the from the the the, the the, the human rights field. No, I mean, after the World War War, we needed causes. We need causes, the women's cause, the environment cause, the human rights cause, the vast field of, of different uh, human rights aspects. But I think, uh, I think uh, this was a time now when you talk about the integration, all these causes are connected to, to a place, you know? So the place is what determines what are the causes, how you go about them, you know? It's not the causes. So the biohubs are like the catalyzers of all, of all these levels, of all these possibilities, of all these complexes. So the funding has to also be like uh, somehow neutral and has to be supported that integration. Otherwise, you know, it's a it's a big confusion, you know, that uh, because the the discourse and the narrative and maybe even the structure of that foundation and funding doesn't is not uh, there is no linkage as possible to do that work. That would be really the 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 regenerative work to anything else, you know, to become anything else. Otherwise as it is already happening. A lot of money is down the rain, you know, because it doesn't have the, the, the linkages, you know. And this, I don't know, maybe you can put this in better words because this is an important call that we are trying to do over this year of the G20 and uh, with all these different dialogues that we are doing, that you need all these components no, to really make uh, the things evolve in a, in a way that they, that they are going to give results in time, you know, and not to lose people, you know, along the way, because it's very important that you don't lose anymore, like we did with Agenda 20. You know, we don't lose people along the way because you lost a lot of good ideas, good people, because nothing really happened in time. No, no, you're so right. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to our conversation on that and happy to have another one on that specifically. Um, just so we don't, because this recording is already 90 minutes long and the longer it gets, the less people are going to uh, listen to it. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I know. I just wanted to also ask you, because I, I saw in your bio that you um, worked with one of my great heroes. And I, I just just wondered if you could say a little bit about your personal relationship with Wangari Matai and, and her way of <laughs> being a doer. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, what really, she was a pin of light, you know, I mean, really, Vangari had that uh, inner light uh, that is, 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 is really somebody that was born to be, to, to manifest it, you No, know? but for me, our, 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 for me, what really was strong of her, and we were very good friends, we, we, many times we, we, we were sharing rooms, was her simplicity, you know, like, uh, from big ideas she became, she kind of find a very simple entry, you know, like uh, how uh, how the 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 the, the Greenbelt movement started because she was the first woman to have a PhD in Kenya, and he was she was like a like a, she was 
thinking of creating a party because of of course. And then when she started to want to mobilize people, she said, but how am I going to mobilize people that are illiterate? I have to see where they are. And so she started where, where they were that were like a caring for their places. I mean, she also came from a rural environment, like doing these nurseries and, and planting like these little seeds and planting trees. And I think uh, for me, uh, she was always that example, no? And what we talked, we start from where you are. There is no method, you know? I mean, it's where there is energy of people and uh, and love. And that's what uh, will make the change, you know? And and uh, and, uh, and uh, Vangari was truly, uh, even when she became the, the Nobel Peace Prize and everything, she always honored that, uh, that uh, deep connection of love. Mm, wonderful that's so beautiful because it yeah. kind of sums up what you've also how you've worked um start, or particularly since yeah. you decided to not um do the the your, your end work in terms of the, the the bigger ngos anymore like it's all about it's the essence of starting like the the regen like people really understanding what regeneration is about is it has to be place sourced it has to be sourced in local culture and it's less a method of implementing something new and more a fanning of the embers of the potential that already exists in the people and in the place and in a specific context. It's it's it's, it's like what you're doing with this, what you refer to as weaving, pulling the hubs together, t beginning to change the narrative by creating this trail and, and connecting the, the the deep history of the place with and and all of it is basically yeah you there is no method you start where you are and mm -hmm. sums it up wonderful. exactly <laughs> yeah with a lot of knowledge you know I mean I think it's uh, there is a lot of knowledge but it doesn't matter you serve mm. the the possibility you know and not uh, and not impose a possibility let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Wonderful. Thank you so much for this time and, and look forward to our conversation in May. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I just wanted to ask you some, something off records if we can. Okay, we'll just, we'll just finish and then we'll have a quick chat. Uh, hold on, where's the... Yeah. Uh, there.